property that has been uh, dedicated to human services and Cross and Anvil Human Services uh, is a ministry of Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church, and we are here to serve this community and to serve you. You know, Pastor said that we're on city property, but you know what? You're also on holy ground. This is, this is a great collaboration between Mount Zion AMA, a faith-based organization with a passion to serve people, adults, children, seniors, and everything in between, every aspect of social services, Mount Zion and Cross and Anvil has been a significant part. This property kind of came to, came to, to, into my vision back in the late 90s when the mayor at that time had decided that the old McLean bathhouse has reached the end of its service life and needed to come down. And there was a community activist by the name of Avita Martin Berry. Amen. And she called me. I was on the city council, and, and, and I don't know if she literally did this, but I sure, certainly pictured it, chained herself to this building and said, you and your colleagues on the city council must find a way to preserve this for the community. And it's, and it's significant role that it could play in the community if partnered right. And guess what? We partnered right. And so I could not be happier to be the mayor of this city, but to partner with Cross and Anvil to provide needed, needed services in this community. And they have a computer bank inside. They and, and, and the transformation, Pastor, has been incredible. The last time I was here, Pastor and I prayed in one of the rooms here, but he was covered in paint. <laughs> and you've never seen a sight until you see your pastor covered in paint. And, and workers everywhere, outside and inside, but through members of his congregation committed to making a difference in, in, in lives, in giving hope to a community. Theirs was a labor of love and is the only reason this is here today. And we had great staff working on this. Yes. But to, to signify the importance of this building, and, it, and it's just a building, but you know what? The things that happen in this building are miracles and will continue to be miracles. To signify the importance, we have members of the school community. We have school board member Renee Flowers that has joined us today. And she's joined by her superintendent of schools, Michael Grego, Amen. is here. This signifies that this is going to be an integral part where the school system will partner with Cross and Anvil. The school system has already partnered with the city of St. Petersburg, knowing that failing schools is unacceptable. And so Michael Grego and school board member Renee Flowers, they're here to, as, this, as this commitment, as a sign of a commitment to this community in St. Petersburg. And so I, I am honored that they, they are here today. But we have um, somebody else that's here who, um, has been a friend of mine for a long time. And this, I got to tell you, this was her vision. And she rode me like a, like a, like a stallion. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> she was all over me. The only time she refused to talk to me, and this lasted for months, was over this. And she made sure that this was in the forefront of my mind. T. Lassiter. I'm just she was she was all in the pastor's face. Oh no. She was all in the superintendent's face. But she knew that this building could be used for good. She knew that through, through collaboration with great partners, we could teach our kids. We could get our kids. And I look over there at these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful young children oh, yeah. over there from the Y. They're, they're going, when they enter into kindergarten, they're going to read at grade level. 
and people are going to go through here. They're always going to be reading at grade level. They're going to be to to stay up. It's all about achievement in school, achievement in, in personal performance. It's all about training adults and 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 parenting and all of the things that go with transforming a community. It's going to happen here. So T. Lasseter, thank you wherever you are. Amen. Thank you. This is your dream. Uh, enough about this. Uh, I'm just excited to cut this ribbon, open the doors, and welcome the people into an incredible, incredible community. Thank you, Pastor, and your congregation for your commitment to all things St. Petersburg, all things the people. As I looked out of my window one day and saw the roadblock as a young man was arrested for shooting a police officer, and as I looked out my window and where he lived, and as I read the newspaper of failing schools that are within walking distance of my office, Amen. and as I look at the hundreds of people that we feed every month, hurting, distraught, suffering from hopelessness, the reason for this center becomes obvious. It represents that time when all of the service and all of the sacrifices that we've given culminate in crime being annihilated, hunger being put out, diseases being cured, broken people being made whole. It's a victory that makes Campbell Park better, which makes our community better, which makes our city better, which makes our counties better makes our states, our nations, subsequently, the world better. So, let us cut this ribbon and go to work. One, two, as a safe haven for the families. It's more than just about the children. It's about the families. But it's a good thing because now our children can come and get the tutoring that they need. They can also take part in different activities. And, and we're going to have a girls club, a boys club. We're going to teach them etiquette. We're going to probably end up teaching them how to cook. But then at the same time, the parents that need to work on their GED are those that are on the system. Uh, Phoebe Quarterman them is going to have an office here where people can apply for food stamps, Medicaid, uh, unemployment. And it's, it's going to be a collaboration of other nonprofits and organizations where the programs that they want to do, they can bring them and do them here. So it's going to be an ongoing, this is so long overdue, it's been a long journey, but we made it. This is a long dream awaited by a young lady who the community first had a chance to meet by personally financing BAD, Blacks Against Dangerous Drugs. Her name was Avita Martin Berry. When I served on city council, I had an opportunity to support the financing of this particular bathhouse as the Campbell Park Family Center, financed by Weed and Seed. And today, we get to open the doors once again for the community and for the children. You know, so many people say that we are surrounded by failing schools, and that will lead one to believe that every child in every school in this community is failing. But I dare think not. I believe that with the help and support of this community, with the internet connections and the computers placed here, and most certainly with the wealth and support of individuals who will come here and lend 
their time, their efforts, and their dollars, our children will be able to make it to their futures. It's a good day in St. Petersburg today. Or this is a time when Greater Mount Zion wanted to do uh, additional work in the community, and the city had an empty building, so, so we can use this building to, to let them bring a series of services to the neighborhood. If we're going to turn around uh, Midtown, you know, w the city can do bricks and mortar, and we can recruit businesses, but the human side of this has to happen as well, and Mount Zion is well equipped to provide a series of, of services to help, help children do better in school, and then help help veterans and a series of other things. So it's uh, it's part of the puzzle to to make for a better uh, better St. Petersburg and more immediately a better Campbell Park. Well, good morning. My name is Bill Foster. I'm honored to be the mayor of the city of St. Petersburg. Welcome to the steps of City Hall, where we are announcing a new partnership and and. We're pleased that you are all here today to take part in what I think will be a very special relationship as we go forward. You know, when I became mayor three and a half years ago, we had something called Mayor's Mentors and More, and I want to thank Mayor Baker for all of his, his tenure of service and really making sure that I understood the importance of education to a community, making sure that I understood that education is public safety economic development, job creation, having an educated workforce, rolls into housing. So it was Mayor Baker that helped, helped me understand that a mayor's job is much easier when you have a great education system. So I inherited Mayor's Mentors and More and, and worked with that program and process for three years. And then a couple of months ago, my good friend, Dr. Michael Grego, took one of my uh, strongest allies in education. Thank you, Dr. Grego. But when Lori Matway decided that she had a great opportunity to work for the Pinellas County School System, it left a void in the city of St. Petersburg, but we didn't look at it as a void. We looked at it as an opportunity. So if anyone is, is, is scratching your head about the timing of this, the, the timing of all of this is coinciding with, with a promotion that Lori really received overseeing all of these education initiatives countywide, but it gave us this opportunity to form better partnerships. Partnerships with the Pinellas, Edu uh, Pinellas Education Foundation, which we already had, Executive Director Terry Bame is here, along with its Chairman of the Board, Jim Myers is here. So it gave us this opportunity to have somebody from the Education Foundation in the office still doing recruitment and retention of mentors, corporate partners, raising money for Take Stock and Children, doorway scholarships, will, which you'll hear a lot more about. But it also gave us a very unique opportunity to, to physically partner with the Pinellas County School Board and the school system to bring one of their employees to City Hall to, to assist this city and allow this city and this partnership to work on nothing but academic achievement of schools and students in St. Petersburg. And so why is this important? Well, first of all, it's important to me, it's so important to me that, that three employees focused on nothing but education are sharing a suite, sharing a synergy of ideas, working on academic achievement, again, of schools and students in St. Petersburg. They're three doors down. They are sharing an office suite on my side of the building, three doors down from the mayor's office. So I can have access to school information, education foundation information, early childhood education information, and all of these things that actually go out into the community. So yeah, we're still going to mentor, we're still going to raise money, we're still gonna be in your face trying to get you and your businesses to support our schools, our teachers, our principals. But we're going, we're going to be able to do so much more, especially in vocational training, certificates of training, trying to forecast the next five years. What, are our, what, are our, what will our vocational needs be in government, in the private sector, and work with P-TECH, work with our doorway scholars at St. Pete College to make sure that we're associating a skill with an actual job at the end of the day. And so these are the great things. It's not 
the same old thing, I can assure you. And when I think about early childhood education and these opportunities to partner with social service agencies, tutorial agencies, faith-based groups, to work on phonetics for a one-year-old, a two-year-old, making sure that they are prepared for that kindergarten experience, making sure that there is no achievement gap starting out. This is exciting. So we have these great partnerships. I've got three people in one, in one area with my staff working with them to achieve greatness. So we've gone from mayors, mentors, and more. And again, it's never been about the mayor. It's not about the mayor. It's about a promise. It's about a promise to, uh, to our children by a community. This is St. Pete's Promise. This is that association where a community can, can come together. And I'm excited about it. You know, there's a lot of municipalities in Pinellas County. As a relatively new superintendent about 10 months ago, our board and myself, we sat down and we decided that partnerships was going to be one of the strongest foundation blocks of our school district as we rebuild it. And I have to say to you without a doubt that when you have the commitment, as Mayor Foster has dedicated not only the the the, the, um, the, the, the resurgence of, of, of this partnership, but also what I'd like to compliment him about is, is the issue of challenging other mayors throughout this entire school district to say, what are we doing? What are we doing in, in other municipalities? Let's take a look at how successful it has been in, at St. Petersburg. And that is, that is critical to having one united school district. So Mayor, as from, from myself as a superintendent, but also from our school board, all seven members, we value these partnerships. We understand that we cannot do this by ourselves. And I, without a doubt, appreciate the mentoring, the caring adult that students have, the financial resources that you've been so successful to secure. And it's all about those things, all about us coming together, the Urban League, other, other partners in, in school districts' experiences. We look to the school to educate its youth, and we will do that. We take full responsibility as your superintendent. I'm honored to serve you. But it also takes all of this community to reach down and work together in order to improve this community. And understand, let me t say something that what Mayor Foster understands. He fully understands, and I challenge all of us to begin to understand, that economic development is about quality education, and quality education is about economic development. So, Mayor, thank you for your commitment to public education. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Grego. This is an exciting day, and the Pinellas Education Foundation is extremely pleased to partner with the City of St. Petersburg and our Pinellas County School District to focus on the students here in this city that need our help. You know, Take Stock in Children is really about helping students attain their dreams and their goals. And it's a positive incentive for our students to uh, do their best to, so that they can attain these dreams and goals that they have. Uh, the city of St. Petersburg has been a leader in our district in this effort. This uh, St. Pete Promise program supersedes the mayors, mentors, and more program, which for the last 12 years resulted in 1,150 students receiving this scholarship, which uh, equates to about $13.5 million of scholarships that have been awarded. These students are deserving, They uh, both from an academic uh, standpoint as well as a behavioral standpoint, uh, show that they're deserving, and this has resulted in about a 93% graduation rate, uh, which is extremely successful. So, you know, when you think about this kind of partnership, it really takes uh, everybody working together. It takes the entire community, it takes the city, it takes the civic organizations, it takes our school district working together to make it truly successful. And that's what St. Pete's Promise has. And we're looking forward to this. We believe that our graduation rates are going to be extremely positively impacted uh, through this effort. We appreciate Mayor Foster's leadership, we appreciate Dr. Grego's leadership, and all of those people who have been involved in doing this. So. From the standpoint of the foundation, uh, there's a lot of momentum, a lot of positive momentum right now. And we're so excited about this because under the umbrella of St. Pete's Promise, 
we're able to expand some of the other programs which are so beneficial to our students and our teachers, such as classroom grants through uh, our city's uh, business persons and individuals um, contributing money, we're able to expand that program to have more grants for our teachers in the classrooms. For uh, Academies of Pinellas, which is career education, uh, we want to expand that and to continue the improvement in those programs and the offerings that are available for our students so that they can have every option available to them to uh, pursue their careers. And also programs such as Walker's Rising Stars, which allows those who are gifted in the arts to display their talents, which are tremendous. And a Ties for Tennis Shoes, which is uh, uh, coming up in December, which will benefit Take Stock as well. So we're just extremely thankful uh, to be here today, to be able to uh, be part of this and appreciate everybody who's involved and want to say a big word of thanks to, again to uh, Mayor Foster for inviting us here today. Thank you. And uh, at this time, it's, it's going to be, it's a big check, but uh, I'd like to present this to Jim on behalf of the employees of the city of St. Petersburg through payroll deductions um, the employees of the city of St. Petersburg have raised over $41,000 to send kids to college. Thank you. You know, a number of years ago, it's been about 15 years since uh, I was first approached. And fortunately, the city of St. Petersburg is a strong supporter and believer in children. When I was asked to mentor, I loved school when I was when I was younger, coming coming through and getting involved in different activities. So when I was asked to be involved, as well as the other employees, I really wasn't sure what to expect. You know, I remember what it was like to be a child. I don't have children myself, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect when I went into the schools. But I felt I needed to play a role because if something happened, if, if people are faulting our school system, I'm part of the reason that we're failing, because I'm not involved. So what did I expect? You know, I, the, the standard phrase, I want to make a difference in a child's life. But little did I know, that's two-way. You know, I, I had an opportunity, I've had an opportunity to work, and I'm continuing to work with students. But a youthful perspective on life gives you a new perspective on life to have an unfiltered truth presented to you when you talk to the children is really something that I think all of us need. To be able to have someone say, no, I really don't like that, and not have that filtered, really gives you an opportunity to pause and say, well, maybe I need to take a closer look at that rather than listening to what I'm hearing all around me. And I think the beauty of youth and the opportunity to do that. So I've been energized. I think that's what keeps me young, is that opportunity each year. And Mayor Foster, I thank you as the, as the head of our organization for making that commitment to our children and allowing our, our employees to take an hour a day. My challenge to each of you is make a difference in our education. Take that opportunity to take one hour, and one hour a week. What is one hour a week? That's watching the news in the morning and at night. That's one hour, and you can make a difference. Mayor Foster said I will be introducing, and I'm actually going to introduce one of my former mentees. When I and I told him I would do this. When I met him, he was. Uh, we were introduced when he was at the end of third grade. He was about this tall. Yang, I ask you to come forward and, and make a few statements. Yang is a graduate of the St. Pete High IB program. Gator. And he is an engineering student at the University of Florida. I had, a, I had an opportunity to spend nine years with this young man. As you can see, he's grown. And he has become a, a wonderful young man, maybe not so much in terms of my influence, but I think I was more influenced and, and changed as a result of my interaction with him. Yang has a few words for you, and then I'd like to introduce our other future entrepreneurs. As uh, CJ said, that uh, my name's Yang, Yang Gong, and she was with me for nine years, and she, I, I think she knows how, how much of a difference she's made in my life. 
every, uh, every Wednesday during lunchtime she would come pick me up from class and we'd talk for about an hour, hour and a half. And having a mentor really, uh, really gives you someone to talk to that's not a parent or like a, a school friend. You can completely open up to them with no judgment. You can seek them out for advice. I mean, this gives you someone to fall back on that's, that you don't feel ashamed to go to them for something when you're having troubles or you have a question. So I think the most important thing from these scholarship programs is the mentor and not the money. Because if I didn't have her to push me and to motivate me, then I don't think that I would be here today talking to you all. Actually, and I'd like to introduce to you two, uh, two other young men. Future CEO, or is he? Calvin Hearns, a Lakewood, Lakewood High graduate and Eckerd, Eckerd, uh, Eckerd College graduate. And he is working on, on his degree. Also with me is Tyler Bentley, also a Lakewood High graduate, St. Pete College graduate, also working towards criminal justice. So perhaps our future sheriff with him today is also his dad, Oscar, uh, who is supporting. So as you can see, a partnership and our individuals. Gentlemen? I'm amazed at the people I've met in my life through this program. The, the most single most important person to me is, is my mentor. His name is D'Angelo Sims. And I can't tell you how many countless times he's managed to steer me in the right direction and lead the right way, the right path for me. It's been many times where I've had, a, had difficulty in school and he's kept me motivated, especially at my time at Eckerd. Um, there's not really much to say, but um, of course I'd like to thank my parents, my dad. Um, no matter where I am in life, school, work, um, I can always come home, talk to my parents, my dad. Um, he's always by my side, whatever I need. Um, I'd like to thank, you know, Mayor and all the partners. My mentor couldn't be here, but um, I was with him for about um, seven years, and uh, he always would come down to the school, talk to me, you know, I see him around town. Um, whenever I need to ask him a question, I could ask him, you know, and uh, again, the unfiltered part, he'd always tell me, you know, you know, hey, why don't you try this, why don't you do that, don't ever just stick to one direction in life. And, um, you know, I, I'm really thankful because I have these people in my life because without them, I, I don't know where I'd be, what direction I'd be headed in life, but um, I know I've said it again, but I, I really can't, can't uh, put more thanks into, uh, you know, parents, mentors uh, in this program, because without them, uh, college would be a little hard, you know, <laughs> uh, pretty expensive. But um, I'd just like to take this time to say thank you to everyone who's involved. Uh, behind the scenes, there's plenty of people that uh, I've never met that um, probably know me. And um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up. This concludes the press conference, but these young men represent the tip of the iceberg as to what is right in the city of St. Petersburg. I mean, you read. You open the paper every day, and, you're, and, you, and you always hear about what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. We've got a bunch of, bunch of young people that are doing right, and, and so we want to celebrate them. We want to lift them up. We want to keep, keep praying for them. We want to keep supporting them and their families to make sure that they know that the sky is the limit and opportuninities abound here in St. Petersburg and Pinellas County. Let's, smart, let's celebrate and continue to celebrate what is right in St. Petersburg.